Uh, we're going to spend the remainder of our time talking about new features in our B5 and E5 servo drives and our B5 and B6 series servo motors. There you see pictures of them on the screen. Just bear with me one moment here. Super duper. And first off, uh, we're going to um, talk about the servo drives. So here you have on the on the left side a, a close-up picture of the servo drives. On the right side, uh, you can see our product offering. And uh, I've broken them into categories according to input voltage. So that the top four shown in green will operate on 240 volt, you know, 200 to, to 250 volt single phase electric. And then your output uh, for the drive start at 0 0.05 point, excuse me, at 0 0.05 kilowatts. And uh, the 240 volts go up to 0 0.4 kilowatts. We have three drives shown in blue. Uh, and those can operate either on uh, the 240 single phase or the 243 phase, starting at 0 0.75 kilowatts and going up to one and a half kilowatts. Uh, there's a um, one unit that operates solely on three phase 240 volt, giving you two kilowatts. And then, as you see listed uh, at the bottom in gray, we have uh, a new addition to our product line, and those are the 400 volt units that will operate on 480 volt three phase electric power. And those drives operate from one kilowatt up to seven and a half kilowatts which is something new for us. That bottom unit, the 0075E servo drive, will operate on 480 volt three phase and at seven and a half kilowatts, which um, is a new addition for Unitronics. So we have some new things. Uh, we, so we have some additions to 480 volt and going up to seven and a half kilowatts. Um, I just want to show you a, a quick chart about the dimensions of the B5 and E5 servo drives. Uh, you can see on the left side here in the center of your screen is a chart with the dimensions for the new B5 and E5 drives. On the right, you see a chart with the dimensions of the B3 and E3 drives, the previous drives that we offer. And uh, just to compare a, a 0 0.1 kilowatt, the new drive. Uh, you can see highlighted with the red circle is uh, 40 millimeters wide, 172 millimeters tall, and 180 millimeters deep. And that is uh, the same width as the old drive. It is a little taller than the old drive by 12 millimeters, but it is the same depth uh, as the old drive. For uh, those of you who um, need to uh, fit this into your panels uh good information to have <coughs> pardon me the um if you go down to the bottom here the two kilowatt drive uh 70 millimeters wide uh 172 uh tall and 180 deep and that compares to 100 millimeters wide 186 tall and 180 deep
So um, we're, we're uh, getting a little more compact. Uh, you can see the 400, uh, the 480 volt drives here in the right column in the center. Um, th those would be either uh, 60, 85, or 90 wide compared to our old 400 volt, dr volt drives operating at 100 millimeters wide or 125 millimeters wide. So the new drives are a little more compact. And there's a, um, a couple more features uh, that we offer with the new drives. Uh, we are uh, introducing for the first time a share DC energy bus. We'll talk about that in a couple minutes. We have zero stack mounting, so you can mount these drives uh, with a one millimeter gap uh, between them. And we'll talk about that in a minute or two. Um, for the E5 EtherCAT drives, the E5-S to be specific, um, we have built in STO or Safe Talk Off circuitry. We also have onboard I.O. for both the EtherCAT and the CAN Open drives. And uh, what I find to be a nice feature is a click, a push to click or push to lock uh, power and motor connectors. And that, that is the bottom connector here that you see on the pictures. Either it's power or for the uh, UVW for the motor. Here's a picture of the connector. I don't know if you can make it out, but on the top of the connector uh, is a little uh, clip uh, that you can push in to the drive and it will click and lock in place. Nice to have so uh, the connectors won't uh, wiggle loose under vibration. With regards to the onboard I.O., uh, both servo drives have uh, onboard I.O. and touch probe capabilities. So the can open drive will be shipped with a 50 pin SCSI connector. You see that on the right. The EtherCAT drive has a 26 pin SCSI connector that you see in the middle of your screen. This is the CN1 IO terminal on your, the drive. So a little bit new, a little bit different. The older drives, the uh, existing EtherCAT drives had a 20 pin SCSI connector. The new drives will have 26 pins. The touch probe um, feature uh, you could think of as sort of end of stroke uh, external sensors. So uh, if you have your motor hooked up to a ball screw actuator, uh, the ball you can uh, mount um, limit switches on the forward and the reverse end of travel. And then that can be wired into uh, the I.O. terminal and it will uh, operate as an end of stroke signal to the drive. So the drive uh, will stop or change direction, however it's programmed. So nice to have. For the STO, Safe Torque Off circuitry, that is only available in the E5-S drive, uh, the EtherCAT drive. The S um, d will give you an indication that it has the STO circuit. This is a new feature for us, and it is located on the top of the servo drive. So you see in the picture, the top of the drive, let's say you were looking down at it, uh, and there's STO uh, terminal 
that it comes with, and you have your connections there. Uh, the STO uh, connector will have a um, will have a um, uh, I don't know what you would call it a um, bypass. Uh, so if you're not using STO, that's fine. Uh, the connector has a built-in bypass. Uh, but if you wanted to use the STO circuit, you would remove the bypass, wire up the connector, and plug it into the top of the drive. Uh, before I move on to the next screen, I'm just going to take a quick break, uh, see if there's any questions popping up in the question box. Uh, we do have a question from one audience uh, participant about the drives operating on 120 volt. Uh, the low voltage North American 120 volt, and no, uh, we we um, we do not have a drive that will operate on 120. Uh, the 220 240 single phase is the lowest input voltage into the drive. Anything lower than that, you'll get an under voltage uh, error, and the uh, drive will not operate. If there's any other questions as we go along, feel free to type them into the question window. Next up, we're going to talk about the zero stacking capabilities. And um, as you see on the right hand, you have your dimensions for clearance in the cabinet or on the panel. And between the drives, you can reduce that gap to one millimeter. Please note that if you do the zero stacking gap, the one millimeter gap, the maximum temperature that the drives will operate with is 40 degrees centigrade. If you had more room between the drives, you could operate up to 55 degrees centigrade. So heat is a big enemy on the drives and the motors. And uh, when they're all stacked together, uh, it can't dissipate heat as, as well as if there was airflow around the drive. Uh, therefore, you have to derate it to 40 degrees centigrade. Let's talk about the shared DC bus function. So uh, if, uh, if you have an application where one drive is spinning and then the next drive uh, starts operating, the first drive starts uh, decreasing in speed, uh, it will uh, generate uh, DC uh, backflow in the, uh, in the wiring circuitry. But you can share that DC energy uh, amongst the other drives. You need to do two things. The first one is you need to enable in parameter 9.0, you need to enable the share DC bus function. And then you need to wire it properly from drive to drive. And you can include all the drives, the, the uh, positive, uh, flow or on the uh, DC voltage would go to the P pin on the drive. The negative um, pole is indicated by the N pin on the connector or on the uh, pinout of the drive. So as you see here on the right, for this drive, you have line one and line two that your AC voltage in. The P would be any uh, DC current that's created by the drive, uh, the plus, and then the N current is for the negative pole. Uh, you have your U, V, and W that would be for the rectified current, uh, rectified electricity going to the motor the UVW are your motor connectors, the PE is your physical earth or your ground, 
in addition to N being your neutral or negative. So it is a new feature, Sherry, the DC energy amongst the drives. Uh, the motors create energy as they turn, and if it's not consumed, the drives can use it if you set the parameter and if you have it wired properly. Nice to have. Save on electricity consumption, lower your electricity consumption, uh, gives you a lower cost of operations, uh, is a nice feature um, if, um, if it's available. The next set of slides, I would like to I would like to discuss some of the new features in the servo motors, the B5 and B6 servo motors, uh, an overview of these new features include 23-bit absolute encoders as you, the only encoder option, the cable connections on the motors, and then there are some changes to the motor speed and motor torque output. So let's talk about that. Uh, here you have a chart in the middle uh, with all the different motor part numbers, starting with a triple zero going up to 0075, uh, which indicates a 7.5 kilowatt. And the rated torque. This is continuous torque. So uh, the smallest motor has a 0 0.159 Newton meters of torque available. Uh, the largest motor has 48 Newton meters of torque available. Uh, and then you can see on the right side, a graph indicating that. We have some new motor sizes that we are offering for the first time. Uh, you can see those indicated by the red arrows or the red circles. So uh, we used to stop at about uh, 15, 16 Newton meters, but now we can more than double that with 48 Newton meters. And this is continuous torque. Torque uh, that is uh, supplied um, all day long from the motor. You could operate 24 seven uh, at the right temperatures uh, and you would uh, be able to apply this torque to your workpiece. In the chart here, um, you see uh, we have our motors broken into three groups. We have the small capacity, high speed, motor line, uh, the triple zero, or excuse me, the, the, the quadruple zero up to zero, zero, one, zero. And we have, these motors are available at uh, 3000 RPMs. Again, these motors can operate 24 seven at 3000 RPMs. If you need a uh, peak speed, you can operate these motors up to 7,000 RPMs for a limited amount of time. So uh, 3,000 RPMs all day long, you can juice them up to 7,000 RPMs for a limited amount of time, as are the torque uh, that you see here, either in Newton meters or inch pounds. You can, the rated torque all day long, the peak torque ratings are about triple the rated torque. The peak torque can only operate for um, a certain period, a short period of time. Uh, so if you have a, a huge load that you need to get started rolling, um, you can uh, operate a peak torque for three to five seconds and then slow it down to the rated torque to keep it rolling. Um, those are the differences here for these uh, high speed, um, small capacity motors in the B5 series. 
The next screen shows medium capacity high speed motors. So you have um, these motors uh, part numbers across the top. And here you can operate 3000 RPMs rated speed. Again, you can operate 24 seven if you need to with the right temperatures. Uh, and uh, you can max them out at 5,000 RPMs uh, for short periods of time. And the torque, again, you can operate a continuous torque, uh, 4.78 Newton meters for this motor size, but you can uh, boost it up to 14.3 Newton meters for a short period of time, uh, three to five seconds, uh, to get loads moving. And again, the B5 series in the medium capacity, high speed. And then lastly, we have the B6 series of motors. We'll operate with a B5 series servo drive. These are your larger motors. And you do notice that the rated speeds are um, maxed out at 1500 RPM with a 3000 RPM uh, peak speed. And then the rated torques anywhere from 5.41 Newton meters up to the 48 Newton meters. Um, and then the peak torques, uh, again, can go up to 120 Newton meters to get loads moving. Uh, that equals about 1,000 um, inch pounds. So pretty beefy uh, motors. They are built uh, solidly and will operate um, at these torques and speeds. given the right temperatures and voltages. So moving on, we will now talk about some of the other features of the servo motors. And the next feature I'd like to talk about is the cabling for the motor. Uh, all of the new motors, B5 and B6 motors, have threaded cable connections. Uh, you can see it here at the top right of the screen. So the connectors on the motors will thread in, giving you an IP67 uh, rating. And that is for the power. And then behind this would be a connector for the feedback. So both connectors on the motor are threaded. On the drive side of the motor, you have for the power flying leads that would connect to the connector for the power. And then uh, you have this, um, well, I call it a funky USB connector. I'm not sure what the, what the, ter the proper terminology is, but on the C2 connector, this is where your feedback would plug into. So on the drive side, Ah, Firewire, thank you, David. Yeah, yep, yep, that makes sense now. Uh, a Firewire connector uh, going into the drive uh, that will click in there. And then again, on the motor side, you have threaded connectors. So that is a new feature, something different uh, with this new series of servo motors. So we have larger drives, we have larger um, voltages and outputs, power ratings, uh, simpler, uh, more simple to use connectors. Yeah, some really nice features available on the B5, uh, E5 motors and drives. Um, also, I want to point out on the new motors, the only encoder feedback that you get are absolute encoders. Uh, they are high resolution 23-bit 
absolute encoders, um, giving you uh, over 8 million pulses per revolution uh, of feedback available from the motor to the drive. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to pause here and see if there's any questions. Uh, if you do have any questions, please type them into the chat window. Let's see, we have a, a couple questions came up. Uh, Martin asked if the um, encoder cables are uh, without a battery, and that is uh, negative. Uh, the cables will have a battery pack um, installed in them uh, to power up the absolute encoder. So if the absolute encoder, once you get it up and running, if the battery dies or you disconnect the cables, uh, you will have to rehome the uh, motor uh, and encoder uh, upon startup. So there will be a lithium battery um, in the cable. There we go. I don't see any other questions. Uh, yeah. Oh, expected battery life. Um, we're, we're currently going on to, let's see, this is 2024. So we have like uh, six years of experience with our current encoders, and um, we have not experienced any um, battery life uh, failure. Uh, no one's had to replace the battery that I know of. Uh, there will be, um, there, there are error codes that will show up on the drive if the uh, battery voltage drops below uh, a certain um, level, uh, indicating that you need to replace the battery for the encoder cable. But uh, I, I, I'm expecting, I mean, safely, I would say four years, uh, four to six years, four to eight years, something like that. Um, all right, so that that uh, wraps up the, the new features for the motors and drives. Um, uh, let me just spend um, a couple minutes in talking about um, the, one, what I think is the best reason to use Unitronics for your servo applications. And uh, it, it's a, a two-part answer, but if someone says, what, what's the best reason, why should I use Unitronic servo motors and drives? Um, I'm probably going to talk about the Unistream PLCs, uh, the family of Unistream controllers. Uh, you see them here. We have the Unistream modular. We have the Unistream built-in and the Unistream PLC headless controller. And um, uh, really, when you combine that with the um, Unilogic software, um, you have two great reasons, uh, two of the best reasons to think about using Unitronic servos. Um, the Unilogic software is one software application for all of the controller, I.O., cloud, and motion control needs. Uh, you have one software that is fully integrated for all of your hardware, all of your HMI, all of your motion control, whether it's VFDs or servos from Unitronics, and you can integrate it uh, with uh, fully tested and fully functioning function blocks uh, that you can drag and drop into your ladder to create some pretty sophisticated and technical uh, applications. Again, that includes the HMI, uh, creating your HMI panels, uh, creating your motion control logic, um, can all be found in the Unilogic Software Studio. 
Uh, you have ready-made code and function blocks. Um, we, we've uh, talked to some integrators and they're telling us that the development of a Unilogic application uh, can be up to twice as quick as using some of our competitors' uh, software. So, um, and then the wide variety of I.O. and HMIs that are available in the Unistream product controllers uh, gives you a huge range of features and functions available uh, to you. So keep that in mind um, as as you think about, well, if you have a servo application and you're not exactly sure how to proceed, uh, reach out to Unitronics. We have a, uh, a very robust line of hardware and the software um, available to you um, can get you up and running um, trouble free. Uh, typically trouble free and um, long lasting. And uh, just uh, something to note, many of you know this, but in case you don't, uh, the, our Unilogic Software Studio is available at no charge to you. You can go to the Unitronics website right now and download the Unilogic software and um, install it uh, and all that at no charge. Uh, so it's a, a great, robust, feature-rich software that is available at no charge to you. So to wrap things up a little bit, um, additional some additional information. Uh, the catalog for the new software, excuse me, the catalog for the new servo products can be found under technical support and in the technical library, um, if you drill down to tech support and technical library, go down to servo, open this up, and you'll see servo drive and motors, B5 and E5S series. And if you click there, it will download the catalog for you with all the dimensions, all the power ratings, um, everything that you need there. Um, to select a servo, uh, to size it up, uh, to lay it out. So that is available right now in the technical library. 